So this video is going to be a bit different to some of the ones I've done in the past. Um, there's not going to be any uh, fancy editing to it. Uh, it's not going to run the storyline. It's basically going to be just an information dump for those who are doing GS conversions uh, or any kind of sort of airhead scrambler things based on this boxer engine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the various different mods I've made to the bike and sort of give you the pluses and minuses and hopefully it'll be a useful resource for anyone doing a similar thing to me. So this bike started off as a 1982 R80ST. Uh, it's got the 800cc engine and it's also got the uh, monolever swinging arm which makes it quite a nice starting point for an off-road bike. So front end, uh, initially I had, I just kept the, the standard ST front end but I had a 21 inch front wheel off a GS on it. Um, that worked fine for most off-roading to be honest. It's only when you started pushing the bike a little bit harder that you really noticed it sort of rebounding off rocks and stuff like that. So I eventually changed over to an R80ST front end. Now you can't just change the forks on these because they are a different size to the ST one. So you have to change the, uh, the triple clamps at the top. Um, you have to change, you have to go for a different front wheel because there's different spacing. Uh, it's a different caliper, different brake disc. So it's pretty much the whole lot has to come off. Uh, the standard GS mudguard will fit on it. Um, and if you want to get this sort of headlights around to fit, you have to make some little brackets which are in there somewhere. They weren't exactly difficult to make. If I can make them, they're not that difficult to make. Uh, for me, it has been a, it has been an improvement definitely over the ST. There's a little bit more travel. They feel a little bit more sturdy. The damping is definitely a lot better. They are independently damped with the left one dealing with compression or the right one dealing with rebound. It might be the other way around. Um, I would check on that. Um, but yeah, uh, they're definitely better. Uh, they're still nice, nice on the road. Probably, if I'm honest. If I was going to do it again, I'd probably go straight down the route of putting like a DRZ front end. Uh, I know Baz from Hyper Pro, he can sort you out with some triple trees that can do that. So you can literally just drop a DRZ front end on it. Anyway, for now, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, it, we're doing all the off-roading that I've been doing. It's actually taking care of it pretty well. Because I had a second-hand set of forks, um, I decided to replace the springs in them. Uh, and Hyper Pro makes some really nice, high-quality uh, progressive springs uh, and that certainly helps the action quite a lot on the suspension. The handlebars I've got on the bike are the Tomaselli off-road high bars which you can find on the Motorworks website. To get a little bit of extra raise I've got the 25mm uh, risers that you can get from Motorworks. Uh, could have potentially gone a little bit bigger but the problem you have with an ST clocks, if I just move that to there, is it starts pushing on this and that's why I've actually removed those little um, the little there's like switch holes there I had to remove them so that uh, it wouldn't push this up too high and then sort of foul it up too much and look really ridiculous uh, I may potentially move remove this bunch of clocks at some point and I think when I do that I'll go even higher with the bars but they're a night high nice height as they are Right, we're on to foot pegs. Um, now, this is something people kept telling me I should do over and over again. I never got doing it. It's only bloody foot pegs. What difference is it going to make? I have now finally sorted it out, and I am so happy I did. Man, it just changes how the whole bike feels. Uh, your center of gravity is just lower. You're more comfortable at the bars. Uh, and also, just because I haven't got my weight so much over the front end, the front suspension just seems to be working better. It's almost as if I'm not loading up the, the fork so much as I'm going along with my weight. So they're just a bit freer to move. Um, initially, so the initial ST foot pegs are, um, are like rubber ones and you just, you just slip off them all the time. So they're completely useless. You can just drop in the standard uh, G slash S foot pegs. But they are really high. I think in comparison to this, they're like they're like up here, and they're quite far back, and that causes your foot also to rub quite a lot on the car bottom of the carb here, uh, which causes some issues that you may have noticed in some of my videos, uh, race ending issues. It was either that or a rock, but I think it was probably my boot. So uh, if you 
this this setup here is absolutely stunning. This is um, this is from HyperPro. If you contact HyperPro and ask them for the BMW R80 foot peg lower, they'll give you this. You can you can they won't give it to you. You'll have to buy it. You can buy this bracket, and then you can fit like this is a KTM 690 foot peg. Um, I haven't ground that bit down yet, which I need to do because um, like, it doesn't. It just, it just, this particular peg actually just taps here, but all I have to do is just grind that peg. So I'm pointing the wrong bit. All I have to do is grind that peg down a little bit and then it will go all the way up. Um, so these are, these are brilliant. They bring the foot peg really low. And the thing is, they're really strong as well. So they, they like make this whole mount here, which isn't the strongest mount ever, really strong by having that sort of tight in there. Um, there are some considerations if you want to go down this route and that is the original foot peg will now hit here so you actually have to if I just move to here you have to bend your foot peg inside of it so it goes inside this arrangement so if you are going down this route just be aware there is some further work to do with your with your brake lever now you can speak to Baz at HyperPro and he will do this for you for a small fee. If you send him the foot peg, he will sort it out for you, he'll do the welding, uh, and then you just pay him a bit of money for his work. Uh, he's super friendly, nice, easy guy to talk to. Um, yeah, so that can be done. I, I don't know if there's any other alternatives, really, if you're going down this foot peg route. If you don't want to go down the route, if maybe you want a bit more of a budget or a bit of a time restraint, restraint or just can't be bothered, um, Motorworks do the SW Motec ion foot peg, which sits like here. So it's a little bit higher. It's not quite as low as this one. And I tried that out and it wasn't bad. It's just not as good as this. And for that, you don't need to change your brake lever. Just wanted to show you the other side as well, because this uh, gear lever has also been modified by Baz at HyperPro. Uh, lovely job he's done on it. Uh, that just makes the gear lever a little bit shorter and a little bit lower. Um, so it's easier to operate. Uh, it certainly gives you a slightly more direct um, change on the gear. I pressed the off button. I meant to be a professional photographer, but um, I'm not a professional videographer. Anyway, yeah, you can see it's also been sort of moved outwards away from the frame slightly. So that's just gonna make it a little bit easier to use. It's a nice little mod that, and overall the whole footbeg thing has been one of the best mods I've done to the bike. It's only such, it seems like such a little thing, but it was highly worth doing. So this bash plate, um, this is a, I think this was from BMW Bayer, this was. Uh, Motorworks may have them in now in the UK as well. Um, there are there are a couple of different standard bash plates that you can get for these. There's a much thinner one, but I just didn't like the fact it didn't really protect the exhaust. To fit these to an ST, you actually need to change the sump from an ST sump, which is a deeper one, to a GS, G slash S sump, potentially a later GS sump as well. And that's got the four bolts, which if you if I show you under there, you can see at least some of the bolts there. Those are the bolts then that attach uh, to that sump, and it's just a really easy fix. If you do get that sump, you also need to get a shallower pickup, and you also need to adjust the length of your uh, dipstick, uh, because you're actually then going to be carrying a little less oil. I think... Oh, hmm. Now... I'm going to be honest, I can't remember exactly what I did on this one, so you're going to have to research that one yourself, but you definitely need to do a little modification with the dipstick. Actually, I think it was too long. That was the problem. The dipstick was too long. Now we're on to my favourite bit of the bike, this lovely rear shock from, this is another Hyper Pro thing, uh, becoming a bit of a fan of their products, to be honest. Um, so initially, the ST, the ST short shock is quite a short shock, so you get less ground clearance and then a bit less travel. Uh, so for the longest time, I did have just like an old GS shock, uh, which I found on the web on the back. Uh, and then, you know, it was fine. It, it gave me the extra ground clearance. It gave me a, you know, a smoother ride, ride excuse me. Uh, but then when I started picking up the pace and trying harder stuff, I did find myself bouncing around loads. So HyperPro do two shocks for these. They do a standard model. Um, which doesn't have the little air thingy at the other end. The air thingy. Sorry, this isn't this isn't professional mechanics here. Uh, but they do two versions, uh, one with the air thingy and one without. 
um, and it was explained to me why the air thingy makes it way better and I will have a think about it and turn the camera back on and try and remember what it was. So here is said air thingy um, and the reason was is because you have such a sh small shot in the sense. <laughs> Uh, it certainly made a massive difference. I definitely noticed racing it uh, a couple of weeks ago, just how much better it was over the bumps. Uh, this system's really nicely made, like really high quality components. So for tyres, uh, for all the racing and winter off-roading in Wales, which is really, really muddy, I use these Metzler MC30s. They're absolutely brilliant. The traction you get, um, you know, in stuff that should just you should just be falling over in is, is absolutely incredible. Uh, on the road, they are hideous. Uh, not going to lie, I, I don't travel more than 10 miles on the road if, uh, unless I have to on these. Uh, so in the when it gets a little bit dry around here, I'll switch back to the Michelin Anarchy Wilds, uh, which I found to be a really good compromise with being still able to take on quite a lot. I mean, most off-roading, to be honest, is perfectly fine with the Michelin Anarchy Wilds. Um, and, and actually on the road they're surprisingly good. Um, I toured down to Albania on those and I'm still having plenty of fun, you know, r uh, rising around the hairpins and things like that. And then, you know, next minute I was off road and they took care of that too. Uh, there's a little bit of tyre noise, but it's not, it's not a horrendous level. There's plenty of noise going through your helmet anyway. So a little bit of extra tyre noise, not going to make a big difference, but, um, yeah, good. I think I'm pretty happy with those two tyre choices. When these wear out, I'll probably do exactly the same again. Uh, the tank I've got on there, this is off an R80GS. It's not a proper Paris Dakar tank. Uh, they were just way too expensive to buy. I quite like this one anyway. It's a little bit smaller. The main Paris Dakar one's really bulky. Uh, I think the main consideration for fitting this one is you just need a rubber part that goes underneath it that sits on the frame, but otherwise it will just drop straight onto an ST. The seat and rear rack is off the uh, R80G slash S's. Uh, lots of places sell these. I know Motorworks sell them. Uh, I don't know if they do them in red. They do definitely do it in black. Uh, but if you are going to buy one of these, do go with one of the high quality ones. There's some really cheap ones out there, which I did initially go to. And then I regretted it because the seat was so uncomfortable. So I've since had to buy foam to put in this cheapo seat. Um, and also, I don't think the quality of my rear rack's particularly good. I've had to weld that already uh, when it's broken. Uh, it goes straight onto a uh, ST as well. Uh, it'll just come with these two little brackets under here, which just attach to where your indicators mount. Uh, yeah, so it's all pretty, pretty straightforward swap over if you're doing an ST. The exhaust on my bike is just a standard ST exhaust. Um, when you the standard ST has actually got like uh, heat shields and stuff over it so there is one consideration is um firstly is that if you want to put any throw over panniers on which i do often you do have to put the pannier frames on otherwise it'll just burn itself on the exhaust the other thing that gets cooked is your boot and beneath that mud there's a lot of melted boot that i kept melting my boot on there so i have made this little um little bracket just to keep my boot just away it's like a little I, w I wouldn't go as far as calling it a heat shield. It's just enough to keep my foot from sinking against the exhaust and cooking all my boots. I really like the sound of the standard ST exhaust. Uh, it's not super loud, which I really like. I like the fact that when I go touring, I don't disturb the places I'm going. And same for green laning. You know, often you pass nearby people's land. And, you know, if we want to keep riding these places, if we can keep the noise down and be as civilised as possible, then, you know it's just it's just better for everyone I, I don't know why i have to smash my ears with a really really loud exhaust saying that i can be a massive hypocrite and i'm sure at some point i'll probably just end up putting on a massive loud can i have got a le mans over there which has got a say lab franconi's which made a shitload of noise um but for now i'm going to pretend i like nice quiet exhausts and i think i do uh the engine on this is completely stock i haven't changed anything on it 
Uh, I really like it. I really like the 800cc en engine. It is a little down on power for, you know, compared to the 1000cc, but it's so smooth and so usable that I find for really tricky off-road, it's just, it's so user-friendly. Uh, there's just, it just feels like, you know, especially watching some of this racing, there's, there's people with more powerful bikes, they just seem to be struggling to get the power down. Whereas this, although there's not enough power, it just delivers it in such a nice way that you've always got that power. Secondly, I don't really want to go that fast off-road. This will take me easily up to 70 miles an hour. Uh, and at that point, yeah, well, it'll take you up to 100 if you want it to, but at 70 miles an hour, if something goes wrong, it goes, I mean, stuff goes wrong really fast off-road, uh, which I found out this year when I near, pretty much gave myself a concussion on my own in the middle of nowhere, and I was only going 20 miles an hour. Um, anyway, that's personal riding preferences. I'm sort of waffling, which I said I wouldn't do. The eagle-eyed the eagle of you will notice that I have actually finally done a mod, which I should have done a long time ago, which is my lock wire, which holds the float bowl on. So if you saw my last video, uh, you would have seen that my float bowl fell off mid-race. That's partly to do with where the foot pegs are mounted and your boot brush brushing against the bottom of the carb. Um, but I'm not taking any chances. I don't want to be in that position again. So I just simply lock wired across the bottom of the clip there. And then I put a five mil, uh, five mil thread. I'm putting it on my screen instead of in front of you. Put a little five mil tap in there and I've got a little screw just because I wanted nice easy access. So if I wanted to be able to take the float bowl off, which I think is a really nice thing of these beamers that you can do quick, you can just get a flat head in there and get that off and then I can still get into my carb. Okay, on side stands, for the longest time, I was using this. You can see my hand there because I've got to hold it because it's not on. I was using this right-handed side stand, which came from the bike. I have no idea where it came from, um, who it's by, but despite being a pain in the ass because it's on the wrong side, it's actually really, really good. Unfortunately, since I've mounted these foot pegs, um, it I am actually sort of actuating the side stand uh, by putting my heel onto the spring. Uh, so that's becoming a bit of a safety issue. So until I've solved that issue, I've gone back to the sides, the standard side sand, which, as you know, is a massive pile of crap. Uh, it's a really awkward place. You pretty much have to, well, you do have to get off the bike to actuate it unless you are a stuntman. Um, it flings back automatically, which um, just means the chance of dropping your bike is so high. And also, I think it's just too low. It's just that's obviously going to catch on rocks and things. So it's probably going to be the next thing to snap off my bike. So I'm pretty keen to get my right hand side stand sorted uh, and get that back going because it's in a way better position. If anyone does recognize that side stand and knows where it comes from, then please let me know because I am intrigued. I've never heard of one before. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this little rundown of my bike. Uh, I hope it will become useful for anyone doing their projects. I'm sure there are some glaring errors in here. Uh, so if anyone does spot them, please feel free to comment below. Uh, and also, if you've got any questions, just comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. At some point when I get a bit of time as well, I'll put links to all the parts uh, that I've mentioned. So you can just go out and buy them and uh, support some of those great companies that have helped me as well. Thanks everyone for watching all my videos. Um, I do hope to make more, or they are quite time consuming. Uh, so now I'm getting a bit busier, they will go a little bit quieter, but I have got lots of cool ideas for other videos. Uh, and I do enjoy reading the comments and also there's conversations I've had with people which have come of this has been great. Uh, hopefully see many of you at Valley's Extreme next year. We need to get enough BMWs on the grid that we can block everyone with our massive cylinders and hopefully take home the win. Cheers. Goodbye.